So hi everyone. Hi. And I would like to start with two questions. So how many of you think making friends is hard? Raise your hand. Okay, there are two hands. And how, how, how many of you think making friends is easy? Okay, okay. A little more, uh, some more hands in this. So for most of us, you might think that making friends is rather easy than hard. Because we share this, uh, we speak the same language, we share the same culture, we interact with people, with people in similar ways. I myself also thought that way two years ago, but when I went to Brazil, that was not the case. So when I got there, I got to, when I got to Brazil, I didn't know the culture, I didn't know people's habits, I didn't know what was right and what was not right to do, what people might not accept. And most importantly, I didn't speak any Portuguese. And my host parents didn't speak English. So I had to depend on my host sisters to translate for me. And I never talked to my host parents directly. Until one day, I was left all alone with my host mother at a shopping mall for, for lunch. So we sat down at a table of two. She was sitting right in front of me, but my eyes were staring right at my plate. I was avoiding any eye contact because I didn't speak Portuguese. How could I talk to her? So I started to play with my rights like it was the most interesting thing in the world. <laughs> and suddenly she tapped my hand. <laughs> that was all I could do because nodding seems polite, right? So I stared right back at my plate and this time I was examining the meat. The silence fell again, but the whole food court was roaring. People were laughing, joking, having the best conversations of their lives. But all I could do was sit in front of my host mother and stare at my plate. What? I didn't come to Brazil for that. I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to speak. So I got out my phone with an offline dictionary I downloaded, and I typed down the word many. And I tried to pronounce it. Muy dos. She lifted her head. I could see she was processing whether that word was Chinese, English, or Portuguese. So she understood. And she stared right back at me, waiting for a second word. Muy dos. <laughs> People. Pessoas. Ah, see, we spent so much. We spent so much time shopping. See, we spent so much time shopping. The shopping. So she typed down the whole sentence in that type in that tiny little uh, search bar on my dictionary. And my dictionary couldn't translate the whole sentence, so I had to split the words up. She was saying, yes, people like the shopping mall. <laughs> okay, so she was telling me that people like to eat at shopping malls. That worked. I was actually talking to my host mother that I never thought I could talk to. Although that first two sentences might have taken us three minutes to get through, but I was talking to her. And from that experience, I learned that whether I could speak a language was nothing, it was not important. What really mattered is the desire to speak, to connect with people. My host mother became my best friend. And through this desire of, to speak with people, I got to meet great people that I never thought I could connect with. From then on, I never spe feared speak por speaking Portuguese. Not even if I spoke the wrong grammar, I didn't know how to use the verb tense, which is really complicated in Portuguese. Or even if I just don't know how to say that word. As long as I was speaking, I was asking people, and they were answering me, 
We were talking, and we were connecting. So speak. But after we speak, we have to listen. Natalia is the nicest girl on our basketball team. She's nice, she's generous, she's considerate, and she always smiles. But one day, after practice, when all of us were, we were uh, waiting at the bus stop, excited to get home, we, I saw her sitting out on the curb in the rain with her head between her knees. I didn't know what happened, but I wanted to help. So I walked toward her, and I sat beside her. I didn't speak. I just put my arms around her. We sat in silence for a long time. People left, we missed three buses, but I just stayed there beside her. And after 20 minutes, when she was willing to speak, she shared with me her stress of not being able to catch up the other girls and not performing well on the basketball court. And I believe at that moment, my pair of ears was the best support I could give her. Through listening, I've connected with the vulnerable part, the real part of people. And these connections made through listening are much deeper than those made through words. However, if you think about it, speaking and listening limits our connections to people, right? What if we not only connect with people? I was lucky to be able to visit the favela Santa Marta in the city of Rio, Rio de Janeiro. And the entrance of this, the favela was a tiny staircase, very steep, but it, it, it went crooked and lied on the, the hill of, of, of Santa Marta. We, on on the, both sides of the stairs, houses were, houses were built on them, but they were so packed they, that they only had a tiny doorway that only one person could pass at a time. And when we, when we climbed up the stairs, the stairs were so, so steep, and we were, we were exhausted, and when we wanted to inhale, different odors floated by. Odors of dog pee, dog poo, garbage, or other odors that I can't name. I, I can't imagine myself living, living in that condition. But when I turned my head around, I saw children smiling because they were playing with so simple things like rocks on the floor and drawing sim uh, simple graffiti on the wall. And in the favelas, there were different colorful graffitis too. Th these different feelings tore me in separate ways. I was really confused. And that feeling had turned into a poem that I wrote after my experience. We climb up the favela, we're tired, and we want, we're exhausted, and we whine that we want to leave. But no matter how loud the people of favela Santa Marta shout, how many can truly leave that harsh condition? And, at, and towards the end of the poem, I was inspired by the favela that I actually have more, I have a lot to bring to this world, more than I ever thought about. With an open heart, I opened my heart to all these feelings, sensations, images, sounds, and smells. They come into my heart and they actually drown me. That feeling is nothing pleasant, I tell you, but that was the deepest connection I had with the favela, right there, right in that moment.
Through speaking, listening, and with an open heart, I now know why every moment in Brazil has been so clear, so vivid, and so memorable until today. Why I still feel sad and torn when I just think about standing in a favela. Why I still feel calm and safe when I recall the moment I was walking in the Amazon forest, brushing my hand on different, different tree trunks that had stood there for decades, even centuries. And when I was skimming my, hand, my fingers on the Amazon River that has provided water to millions, even billions of lives. And why I still feel happy and beloved when I just remind myself of that moment, standing in front of the Copacana Beach in Rio, celebrating New Year's Eve with my fam Brazilian family and friends. I might not remember how, how colorful or, or how beautiful the fireworks were, but, but the love within, in those tight hugs, those passionate kisses, and the wholehearted wishes we change with each other. Especially the love of someone introducing me with Essa é minha filha taiwanesa. This is my Taiwanese daughter. That is something I can never forget. I opened my heart to people, places, and to the nature, to nature in Brazil. And these connections hug me back. They wrap around me until today like a hug that will never come loose. So two years ago, a 17-year-old girl has left a, heart, her, a part of her heart in Brazil and kept deep, precious connections in her heart that she will never forget. My open heart has brought so many gifts to me, but I hope all of your open hearts can too. Thank you.